Hello everyone, I'm Tabitha with Moonlight Custom Creations and today I'm going to show you how to create a book page tumbler. We're going to do some distressing and we're going to add a lot of things to this tumbler. Go ahead, stick around, watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's create some magic and get crafty. All right, y'all, we are starting out with a 20 ounce skinny from Maker Flow Craft. I already sanded it down with 80 grit sandpaper and spray painted with Rust Oleum two times flat white. We have Cleopatra and Golden Moss mica powders from the Glitter Grind here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few scoops of each one of these mica powders into my little container here and I'm going to mix them together. I did two scoops of the Cleopatra and now we're gonna go in with our Golden Moss. And I'm just going to judge it. I'm starting off with two scoops and then I'm going to mix it. And I do end up adding a little bit more Golden Moss because the Cleopatra just completely took over the green. <laughs> so I'm adding just a little bit more Golden Moss, but this is totally up to you, whatever color you feel like you want here. And you don't have to use these two mica powders either. I'm going to add a little bit of Mod Podge in with my mica powder and I'm going to use this as my base paint. I didn't have a color that I liked for this tumbler. So I just decided to mix some Mod Podge in with some mica powders to make my own color. That way I had my own little mixture here and that created the base that I wanted. Now don't be fooled by the color of in that don't be fooled by the color that's in the container. It looks like baby poop. But I swear it is gorgeous on the tumbler. <laughs> and when it dries, it does not look like this at all. Plus we're going to put a lot of things on this tumbler, so don't let the color of it fool you. <laughs> this is definitely a trust the process type of tumbler. So I'm just going to take my makeup brush here and I'm going to smooth this little mixture that I made all over the tumbler, making sure that I try to get a nice even coat. You will have some spots. I did have some spots around the bottom rim, but I'm going to put some foils there. So I really didn't worry too much about that. You just want to make sure that you get a pretty nice even coverage throughout the tumbler. And you don't want to forget the bottom. Make sure you get the bottom very well, just like the sides. And I do a little tapping motion on the bottom just to make sure I get it on in on all those nooks and crannies of the tumbler. Now that we're done with our paint job, we're going to go ahead immediately right after. And we're going to go in with some Cleopatra here. So we grabbed our tumbler. I'm just going to take a little scoopful of Cleopatra and I'm going to sprinkle it. Got a little dab there. I'm going to sprinkle it all over the tumbler, making sure that I do more of a sprinkle motion than just kind of dumping it on there. And that's going to give us this nice little gold color shift over top of this green that we have. And the Mod Podge is going to allow it to stick. And you don't want to forget the bottom here. And now I'm going to do the same thing after I get done with the gold. I'm going to do the same thing with the golden moss. I'm just tapping my little spoon here that I have and making sure that I get the golden moss everywhere all over the tumbler, but still ensuring that the base is peeking through. And that's what you're going to be left with here. It's looking absolutely gorgeous already. I love it. Now we just set our tumbler aside to let that dry and we're going to de-stress these book pages. Now I just printed these off on regular computer paper. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to start shredding some pages because this is what we're going to put on over the base of the tumbler. Now, this does not have to be perfect. Just go in and start ripping. Um, however thick or thin you want these distressed pages to look, just go in, start ripping them up because after we get done ripping, we are going to burn the edges and de-stress the edges. So it's fine if some of the white is showing because it's going to be burned off anyway. Now that we have all of our pages ripped up, we're going to very carefully take our lighter and start burning the edges. I like to do little sections at a time and then blow it out immediately <laughs> so it doesn't set the entire piece of paper on fire. Now this does take some time and it does get a little messy with the ashes everywhere, 
but just make sure that you have like a door open or a window. Make sure that it's in good ventilation. Otherwise, you're going to have smoke everywhere. Um, And then just have fun with it. Pretty much like any design you want to make. I mean, the fire kind of does it itself. So that's kind of nice. But you want to just go in and distress all of these pieces of paper or however many pieces you think you're going to use for your tumbler. This is actually one of my favorite things to do for a tumbler is to distress paper and put it on there. I have done it in a couple of my tutorials already. My We the People tumbler is probably my absolute favorite that I like to do that with. It just shows that, you know, the constitution, like it's very distressed and it looks very old. It looks like it's been through a lot. So I absolutely love this look. Now that our tumbler is nice and dry, we can go ahead and start applying our distress book pages. Now, you just now I'm just taking each page or each little section to figure out exactly where I kind of want everything. And once I get somewhat of a placement mapped out in my head, I'm going to go ahead with my sponge brush and some Mod Podge, and I'm going to coat this entire tumbler with Mod Podge. That way, the book pages has something to adhere to. And I don't like doing Mod Podge like page by page, that just takes too long. So I just go ahead, coat the entire tumbler, and then apply the pages on there. Now that your tumbler is coated in Mod Podge, you can go ahead and apply the distressed pages here. You're just going to go around. It doesn't really matter how you put them on there. It's your personal preference or whatever your customer wants. You're just going to go around and make sure that you don't butt them up against each other. Not unless the, that's the look that you're going for. That's not really. I'm leaving just a little bit of space in between each page. And once you put it on there, make sure that you smooth it out very well. Make sure that there's no wrinkles or anything that it adheres very well to the surface. And you're going to do this around the entire tumbler besides the bottom. You're going to leave the bottom alone. And that's what our tumbler looks like after we apply all the pages. Now we're just going to take our leftover Mod Podge that we have or you can grab some more if you need some more. But you want to seal this in. You want to do one to two coats of Mod Podge over top of this paper. That way it's nice and sealed and you know you'll have no lifting whenever you go to put on your coat of epoxy. Once you're done adding this coat of Mod Podge, go ahead, set it aside, let it dry. Put one more coat of Mod Podge on there to make sure that it's nice and sealed. And I will be back to show you the next step. All right, y'all, now that we have our second coat of Mod Podge on there, we're going to go in with our Desert Glow. Now, this is the fine mix. Now, I'm just going to go in there with a little pinch and just sprinkle it in the open areas, in the areas of where the book pages is not. And this is going to give it just a little bit um, additional sparkle because, you know, I guess on this tutorial, I felt a little extra, which, you know. That's fine. <laughs> so we're going to go in and just sprinkle some of this Desert Glow, the fine mix, just to get it a little bit more sparkle. And that is just so gorgeous. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead, set this tumbler aside, and let it dry. Now that our Mod Podge has fully dried, that's what our tumbler looks like. So gorgeous. We are going to take this copper foil that I got from the glitter grind and their adhesive. I'm just going to dunk it in with this little paintbrush that I have and then just do brush strokes all over the bottom and the top of the tumbler. I want it to be very distressed looking. So I'm going in with my paintbrush. And so it's like you want to use a skinny paintbrush and go in at an angle just like I'm doing here to get those fine strokes. And you want to do this all over the bottom of the tumbler. And what I like to do is I like to heat it up with my heat gun to make sure it dries faster because, you know, I don't like waiting. So I'm just going to heat it up with my heat gun and that way it dries a little faster. 
Now that our adhesive is nice and dry, we could go ahead and wrap this foil. Make sure the pattern is facing out. You wanna wrap the foil around the tumbler and applying pressure over the base of the tumbler. You could use your scraper tool here. It's not necessary. You could also just use your fingers. I started out with the scraper tool, but then I just kind of switched my fingers and then started going back and forth between my fingers and the scraper tool. But you wanna make sure that you do apply pressure here to make sure that the foils stick. And then you just wanna peel the foils off and see what you're left with. See if you want to clean up any spots or anything, or if you wanna add a little bit more. And that's what we have here. Now, if you do have like a little spot, you could take your fingernail or your X-Acto knife or anything like that. You can just kind of scrape it off. Now, I'm also gonna go in because there are some spots that didn't adhere very well. I'm gonna go back in and make sure that all those spots are taken care of. Now I'm gonna do the same process that I did with the bottom, and I'm gonna do that same process to the top. Going in with light brush strokes, making sure that I don't oversaturate the tumbler because you don't want it dripping, and just making my own little design here. Now this is what it looks like after the foil work. Now I'm going to set this aside, and I will be back to show you the next step. All right, y'all, we are gonna go in with our first layer of epoxy here. I have about, I have a lot of epoxy mixed up, but I'm only going to be applying around 15 to 20 mLs of epoxy on this first layer here. Now I'm just making sure that I do a nice even layer and that it's not dripping off the tumbler. Now I do also have the Golden Moss Mica Powders. And I'm going to add a little bit of epoxy to that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the mica powders and the epoxy. Make sure it's mixed up very well. I do also have some glitter that we will be using. I will be using Mojito and Desert Glow, the Chunky Mix. Because, you know, this tumbler is a little extra. So we had to put a little extra on it. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of the Desert Glow, and I'm just taking a pinch and just sprinkling it onto this tumbler. I'm not wanting to add a lot of glitter to the outside, just a little bit, which is why I'm just taking pinches of each. And now I'm going to go ahead with the Mojito and do the same thing like I did with the Desert Glow. Just taking a pinch and just drizzling it all over the tumbler. Now we're gonna go in with our mica powder mixture since I let that sit for a minute. And I'm just going to drizzle it on the tumbler, going in a slanting motion all the way up the tumbler. And all this is just gonna add a little bit more depth and distressing to the tumbler. Now we're gonna go in with our heat gun and I wanna move these mica powders just a little bit. You don't want to put a lot of heat on this. I do have it on the lowest setting because I don't want to move it a whole bunch. I just want to move it slightly because I don't want the harsh lines in there. I want it to spread out just a little bit. So I'm just hitting it with a little bit of heat just to get those mica powders spread out a little bit more. After we get done hitting it with the heat, I'm gonna let this spin for a full 12 hours. I did do this right before I went to bed. So I just let go ahead, let it spin overnight and in through the morning the next day. And I will be back to show you the next step. All right, and here is the tumbler the next day. It has a coat of epoxy on it and I did sand it down just a little bit to get all the bumps off and we're gonna go in with our decal just a girl who loves books i thought this decal was absolutely perfect with this tumbler i did get this vinyl from courtney's customs and i will have my link for her down in the description box below now i'm just going over trying to find the smoothest spot on this tumbler to place our decal i always like to eyeball my decals so I'm going to judge where the middle is and press down side to side, making sure that my vinyl is adhered to the surface. Now that we got the decal on there, we are ready for some more epoxy. 
Now I'm going to go in with another 20, 15 to 20 milliliters of epoxy, making sure that I cover up the entire surface of this tumbler without it dripping off, of course, making sure it's a nice even layer. I do add one more layer of epoxy after this. And that's it, y'all. This is the finished tumbler. I really hope this tumbler inspired you to create something of your very own, or you can just recreate this tumbler for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Thank you so much. Bye.